So, we're going to make microwavable French toast and it's super easy. And if you have any fruit, you can put fruit into this. So this recipe actually used blueberries, but I don't have any at home. But you can add strawberries. I'm pretty sure you can use mango or any other kind of fruit that you want. And we're gonna start. For the French toast, they need one piece of bread cut up into cubes, two tablespoons of milk, one egg, a teaspoon of vanilla, and four teaspoons of cinnamon, and maple syrup to taste. So I actually used to love French toast. I would have it for breakfast like every day before school until I got fed up and then I had pancakes. So it's always been something I really, really like. So basically you're gonna take a piece of bread and you're gonna cube it. So it looks like that. And obviously you need a mug. So we're just gonna put the bread in the mug. And this recipe does use an egg, so if you don't um, eat egg, then you probably shouldn't make this. So I have one egg here, and I'm just going to whisk it, or like, mix it. And you want to mix it until the yolk and the white are completely combined. The last time I made this recipe, I didn't mix the egg properly, and then I got like chunks of egg white just floating around which didn't taste really good. So, And once you've mixed it properly, just set it to the side. And I would actually suggest starting off by adding the milk because all the liquid will sink down to the bottom. And every time I made the recipe, I always add the egg in first. And I found the egg would just get really like congealed to the bottom and just like sit there. And it wouldn't taste that great. So I started off with adding the milk. I have some vanilla extract and some cinnamon. You can also add nuts into this if you like, like nuts in your French toast. It's completely optional. And I'm just gonna give that a mix. So this is what it looks like right now. Everything's just in there. And the good thing about this recipe is you can use like the end of the bread that no one actually wants to eat. So you don't have to waste the bread, you can just put it in here because it's going to get like kind of mushy anyways. So just mix it. And if you think you have too much liquid, you actually don't. Because I added an extra half slice of bread last time I made this and it became really like um, really stiff and it, it wasn't like soft or anything. It was just really thick and it wasn't easy to eat and it was really dry. So you actually don't have too much liquid. You have exactly how much you need. So I'm just mixing this. And if you want it sweet, so when you do traditional French toast, you don't actually sweeten the egg and the milk mixture that you dip your bread in. You just put maple syrup on top. If you want to sweeten it, you can add in sugar or maple syrup here or you could just add it in on top, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to mix this. And by mixing it with a fork, I've broken up my bread a little bit. And that's fine, because it's all it's gonna be cooked anyways. So it looks like this now. Kinda like, you know, it's like all mixed and mushed. So I'm gonna set this aside for a few minutes so the bread can soak up all the liquid. And then we're gonna microwave it. So I just put it out of the microwave. It's pretty hot, but I'm gonna taste it. But before I taste it, maple syrup. I have a huge sweet tooth. And I think I'm addicted to sugar, like most of us are. So I'm gonna take a bite. So that's what it looks like on the inside. It's really soft, which is why I said that you should only add that one piece of bread. It's really soft, wow, okay. That's really good. And I love adding cinnamon and nutmeg actually on everything. Like I add it out of my oatmeal and obviously in this. If you don't like cinnamon, you can leave it out, but I would definitely recommend adding it if you like it. So now we're gonna make a chocolate mug cake. Um, and for the chocolate mug cake, they need four tablespoons of flour, 
two and a half tablespoons of sugar, two tablespoons of cocoa powder, half a teaspoon of baking powder, three tablespoons of milk, one tablespoon of oil, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and if they want to put any chocolate spread on top, they can do one tablespoon of any chocolate spread they want, plus anything else that they want to add into it, like powdered sugar on top. And for the chocolate buck cake, you're gonna have dry ingredients and wet ingredients. And we're gonna mix all the dry ingredients together in one bowl and all the wet ingredients into another bowl so that when we combine them, everything gets mixed properly and there are no like lumps of sugar or lumps of cocoa powder. So to start, we're obviously gonna need a mug and we're gonna add enough flour and then our sugar. So in the mug right now, I'm adding all the dry ingredients. the baking powder and the cocoa powder and I have a small whisk here you can use a spoon or a fork or a knife but I like using a small whisk because small things are just cuter in general so and I'm just mixing everything in until it's well combined once that's done we're going to add in our milk into another bowl along with our oil and the vanilla and so if you use vanilla in the chocolate cake it doesn't have to be the best tasting vanilla because it is going in the chocolate cake but if you're using vanilla to make like vanilla ice cream or like a, like a vanilla cake you want to use good quality vanilla that actually tastes good because the vanilla that I just used, it tastes like vanilla and it gives you the flavor of vanilla, but it doesn't taste that great. Like it has a weird like aftertaste. So I used it in like um, things like the French toast when there's maple syrup or chocolate cake when there's chocolate. So you don't actually taste the vanilla. But if you're going to use it in vanilla cake or something that is that the flavor is vanilla, you want to use really good quality vanilla extract or vanilla bean paste. And that can be expensive, but it's worth it. So now I'm adding the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients. And I'm just gonna mix it. So now that I've mixed it properly, it looks like that. That's the consistency. And after we microwave it, and we're microwaving it for 90 seconds to 2 minutes, after we microwave it, we're actually going to put, or well, the recipe calls for hazelnut spread on top. But I don't have any at home because when I was younger, I would eat it like by the jar and we'd have to replace the jar like every few days. So my mom banned it from the house. So we don't have any Nutella at home or any hazelnut spread for that matter. So I'm going to put melted chocolate on top. You can also add peanut butter if you want, like on top if you want like a peanut butter chocolate cake because I really love peanut butter and chocolate together. This is really good. So I'm going to put this in the microwave and then you have to check it when you microwave it because you don't want the cake to um, rise and fall out because we've added baking powder which is going to help it rise and you just want to check it periodically to make sure that the cake isn't rising and falling out of the mug because that will create a huge mess in the microwave. I've pulled the mug cake out of the microwave, I'm sorry, I'm just... and that's what it looks like, it's pretty dark. And if you want to check if it's cooked, the easiest way is to just take a knife or a toothpick and just stick it down the center of the cake, like all the way to the bottom. If it comes out clean and nothing sticks to it, you know it's completely cooked. And like I said before, because I have no Nutella or hazelnut spread at home, I have some melted chocolate here just some regular milk chocolate and I'm gonna form that on top of the cake so I actually use less sugar than the recipe called for because um, I'm not a huge fan of having my cakes sweet I, te I like them if they're on the less sweet side so if you like a sweeter cake then add a little more sugar if you like a less sweet cake add a little less sugar just change the recipe based on how you like your cakes and that's it that's what it looks like it's a little messy but um it's a mug cake it's ready in like two minutes so it's worth it <laughs>